Black Girl Nerds. Better shake your booties for Black Girl Nerds. Hey guys, I'm your host Ryan Bennett and I am so excited. Season two of The Mandalorian has been coming out Fridays on Disney+. Plus. This is such a cool series to me. It really got me interested again in figuring out more about Star Wars and jumping back into some of the old movies where a little bit before I was kind of hesitant because sometimes you get a little confused like, you know, from the from the old school to some of the newer movies like where the order they fit in and everything and, and bringing in, you know, uh, baby uh, Yoda and everything just really um, sparked my interest about Star Wars again. So I really love this series. So cool that I get an opportunity here to share recaps and really break this down with you guys. So I went back, watched season one. I want to give you a quick recap of that. Then for season two, I'm just going to get into chapter nine, but chapter nine and 10 are out now, season two for you to watch and also something really cool for season one all what they were giving us were like 30 minutes maybe they went a little bit over the 30 minutes but i saw like a 54 minute 41 minutes so they're giving us more content which is great um because Mandalorian was definitely popular coming out season one you cannot get enough of baby yoda which is by the way called the child in the series and we'll get a little bit more into the name and all that kind of stuff and the big hype and fan around baby yoda but yeah, so let me kind of get you guys started here with a season one recap. John Favreau is the creator. If you're not familiar with him, he's done a lot, a lot of uh, live action, like The Lion King and stuff for Disney. So um, he's really cool, really cool that he's brought the spin on here. And also the fact that they're taking a lot of, he's kind of incorporated a lot of the Star Wars elements, some of the characters, obviously some of the cool creatures, the transportation and stuff, but it's actually outside of the movies in its own little, little separate world. So this is, it's really dope the way he's kind of created that and still pulling in those genuine Star Wars fans in this world that he, he's created. Let's go down the cast a little bit here. Pedro Pascal plays the Mandalorian. We have um, Gina Canero, um, Canaro, I think I'm blasting her name right. She is an MMA, a former MMA fighter. She is Cara Dune, or Cara Dune. And we have Carl Weathers with uh, Grief Carga. He's back. Um, and Gina Carlo Esposito plays um, Moff Gideon, which we're going to get into him. He was like the big bad of season one or the big bad that everybody realized by the time we got towards the end of season one. So, yeah, those are some of the key um, players you'll be seeing around. And so season one was really cool, really dope the way they pulled everything together. We learned that um, the Mandalorian is part of uh, this guild that um, in the guild, they operated heavily on bounty hunters that bring back, di you know, different uh, criminals, everything across the um, this uh, Star Wars galaxy, Star Wars universe. And so we learned about that. We learned the Mandalorians have a very strict codes, like nobody can, uh, no living creature can see their face. They start out as, um, Fondlings um, are a found uh, foundling, uh, meaning these really young kids that are just kind of raised in this world of of you know being able to fight and protect themselves and stay invisible, stay cloaked. Um, really super cool armor and gadgets and stuff that they um, get the rock, which is really dope to see all these these uh, effects and all these scenes come together. So yeah, we get all that kind of stuff. We um, we also learn that. Um, the way that Baby Yoda or the child is kind of introduced to the the series is is you kind of get like little tidbits here and there of exactly what Baby Yoda can do and how it how it incorporates into the Mandalorian. Because basically, he started out as his main goal was to okay, I got this. Basically, is seen as like a product. I got this bounty. I need to get it to these people. They're about to pay me a whole bunch of money. I'll be set. I'll be good to go. But um, baby Yoda ends up saving him on his um, on his quest to actually get him to actually get Baby Yoda to the to the um, people that were going to pay uh, the Mandalorian. 
uh, Baby Yoda ends up, you know, using the force and ends up saving the Mandalorian. So he starts feeling this debt. He's feeling this guilt of, okay, I'm going to break the guild a little bit here. I can't, I have to ask some questions. I got to figure out who this creature that saved my life was. So he goes back, busts Baby Yoda out. And so we get this Mandalorian, cool Baby Yoda team. And I'm going to keep saying Baby Yoda because that's the fan name, but it's really called The Child in the Series, just in case anybody gets confused on that. So, yeah, so he goes and busts Baby Yoda out, um, and now they become this cool little duo that you get to see throughout the season, and Baby Yoda has so many hilarious moments, such as um, the infamous one that I know had, they have tons of memes, memes of, of Baby Yoda outside of, ca- outside of like a little cafe, little restaurant, sipping on soup while the Mandalorian is getting his butt handed to him by um, Kara, or they're both kind of, I guess we could say they're both kind of equal in their fighting uh, their fighting style. So that was, that's still one of my favorite scenes. And I know everybody, that was just hilarious just seeing Baby Yoda sit, but they're like, okay, just another, another day. You know, I just got to get my, drink my little soup here while you can, you finish this fight, carry on. So yeah, that was one of the, the funny moments um, of that season. But uh, so, yeah, so we have that, how Baby, uh, uh, Baby Yoda, the Mandalorian met up. Also, you get this sense of when uh, the big bad kind of enters the scene that everybody's trying to figure out, okay, who is this guy uh, from the Imperial Guard? And he has all these um, these um, ex-Imperial um, uh, guards with him. And he's very mysterious, causes all this mischief. They're looking for, they really want to get a hold of Baby Yoda or the child. They know he has a special gift, the special powers. So it's all about getting to this child figuring out um, why this this warlord who is who is ex um, imperial guard has came, has come in to um, to their town um, of Navarro and just kind of just doing you know doing whatever he wants to do has a bunch of these stormtroopers also out and about patrolling cracking down on things so yeah it's it's very cool how this unfolds as the season goes. And um, so we, there's this really cool scene too I want to mention in season one. Um, in chapter eight, the season finale, we finally get to see who's underneath the Mandalorian's mask because he ends up getting injured thanks to um, Moss Gideon trying to, uh, basically there was like a charge of bomb in front of the Mandalorian when he was trying to fight off, you know, the stormtroopers. Because again, I said all about protecting this little one over here. So, you know, the Mandalorian's going to do whatever he's got to do. So, uh, long story short, um, Gideon blows up or tries to attempt to blow up the Mandalorian. Doesn't succeed in being able to kill him because IG-11, which is another really dope, cool um, character in this that goes along throughout this season, ends up saving his life. And since droids are not considered, you know, obviously human, like a human form, he's able to unmask the Mandalorian in order to heal him. So then we get to finally see, you know, Pedro Pascal actually on camera. We know he's behind there. We know he's been doing all this stuff. We get to see him on camera. So the Mandalorian's mask come off. I know that was a big excitement for everybody coming out of season one, which I was actually surprised they did it. I mean, it was cool. I thought it was a really cool, uh, dope scene that was really important, but it was weird. I was, I kind of thought they would kind of wait us a little, like a little bit longer for us to actually get to see his helmet off and everything. Cause that was the big mystery of all the season. Like nobody's ever supposed to see a Mandalorian like that. It's all about this blinged out protected armor that they rock constantly. So that was interesting that they did that going into the, to the season finale. Also, we get to see the Mandalorian go back to his home, um, or I guess his, um, t- uh, back to of uh, his fellow Mandalorians where they have their little secret hideout and everything. And that's kind of been destroyed because they helped him get away with the child earlier in the season. So we get to see him go back there. Um, there is a, a woman there that's like a weapons master. She creates a lot of the armor and everything like that. And so she ends up, telling him, okay, yeah, this is what happened after we, we knew what we were risking to go out and try to help you. And this is what happens. And she gives him um, his seal and basically tells him, hey, look, you are now, I know that this child was part of a secret uh, sorcerer Jedi 
uh, group that you need to go find. You need to take him back to where he belongs. So until he finds his people, you are basically his father. So you need to protect him, take care of him. She let him load up, like reload up on all his weapons and everything. Because basically his um, his creed or his his fellow Mandalorians are all dispersed. Gone. Some of them might be hiding. Some of them might be out. Ever since the Imperial Guard and everything came back in and started taking, taking over stuff in Navarro. So... I thought that was a little cool moment to kind of see that. And then as we kind of roll into season two to figure out what's that going to mean for him, because now he has this new mission ending season one. Okay. I am protect. It's me and the child, you know, basically to the end. So he gets the child back to his home. He's responsible for the child. So they go everywhere together. So I thought that was a really cool dope moment to end season one with. And also, there was a really cool epic showdown between Gideon and, and the Mandalorian, where we get to see the Mandalorian put on his um, jetpack, and they go, and they have the super dope, cool fly scene. Um, you have the um, Gideon and his spacecraft ends up going down because the Mandalorian um, rigs a couple of, like, charges, the way he just fly, flyly pulls out these gadgets off his arm. It's always dope to me. But yeah, so Gideon ends up going down. Towards the end, we see the wreckage and we're thinking, okay, Gideon's done. But of course not. We see um, these Jabawas kind of wander up there because, you know, they like to get the parts of the stuff after the, the spacecrafts and everything have been dis the destroyed. They like to go and get, you know, whatever little trinkets the stuff they can get with their little grubby hands and everything. But all of a sudden, we see this uh, sword, which is a dark saber, cut through the spacecraft. And out comes Gideon looking like suspicious, crazy, all wrapped into one. And we like, whoa, dude is rocking a dark saber. What is happening? What is going down? Boom, end of season one. And we had to wait months and months and months. So we got all this COVID stuff happening. But we finally got October 31st. Friday, we finally got chapter nine. Actually, they might have released. No, I think they're doing it Um, because before they released a multiple episode one time, but I think they might have did it separately. So yeah, we got chapter nine. And now I am about to give you a breakdown of that. So let's get into season two here. So first off, like I said, um, this is really dope. This episode was 54 minutes. The next one, I believe, is 41 minutes, so I loved it there. I don't know if that was a fan thing, like everybody saying, hey, we want more, because you get so engrossed in the characters. That the 30 minutes does seem very, very short, especially when you're talking about breaking out any kind of mythology or any kind of history you want to bring in when it comes to Star Wars. It seemed super short, so yeah, I'm super excited about that. Okay, this is Chapter 9, titled The Marshal, and we open up with... The child and Mandalorian walking down this creepy street. I don't know. I guess it's like an alley or whatever like that. And they end up going into this fighting facility. And you already know what's going down because the Mandalorian is constantly, he's he's like always on a search for something. And you know, when you when he leaves a place, people just like, all the people are going to be down. Like, unless it's just a friend that he purposely went to go see everybody going out because, you know, the Mandalorian just don't play that. And he's going to do whatever he's got to do to protect the child. So yeah, they enter this fighting facility. And um, so basically we end up finding out he's on a quest now to find more Mandalorians because he needs to, it's going to lead him more on his journey to figuring out, okay, where's the child belong? What's his family? What's his story? How do I get him back? So once they get into this facility, they meet up with this, this uh, bad guy or this guy with his, his homies or cronies, whatever, called Vascar, I believe his name was, if I'm pronouncing it right. And basically, he was going to be the one to tell the Mandalorian, I guess his thing seems to be he liked to sell off their armor or sell off uh, different things about the Mandalorian so he would know where to find them or where they're at. So that's what they're trying to figure out. He all of a sudden, though, has a problem with the fact that the child is in there with the Mandalorian. He's like, oh, this is no place for a child. And the Mandalorian set him straight quick, like, hey, wherever I go, he goes. So that that's another thing where it's just like, okay, why are you coming after Baby Yoda? Like, what's the deal here, dude? So he ends up, this is the thing, too, where it turns is, and I was like, what's happening right now? He turns around and he he tried, well, first he makes a bet with the Mandalorian. He's like, okay, if I do da 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 I don't have to tell you, you have to give me your armor and I can sell it and I don't have to tell you where any more Mandalorians are, you know, just being a difficult bad guy, you know, instead of just answering the question probably would have been smart but anyway we already know this guy's not too smart he's kills uh one of the fighters that are in the ring all of a sudden turns his gun on the mandalorian um most hilarious i'm gonna skip over there was a there's a hilarious child scene or baby yoda scene i'm gonna skip over that 
because I'm going to go back and give Baby Yoda his own little section here in a little bit. But yeah, so we have some a funny moment from that. But basically, it's just throw down epic fight scene with the Mandalorian and this and this uh, Vascar's um, guys and his crew. They end up fighting. Vascar, of course, at the end, tries to take his tail running out of this fight club or whatever. Of course, Mandalorian catches him gets uh answers out of gets answers out of him of course and then it was and then it was weird because he shot this instead of he's like okay if i tell you where the mandalorians is mandalorians are promise you won't kill me and of course the the mandalorian being as clever he is he's like yeah i'm not you're not gonna die at my hand so strings him up to this light pole thing or whatever gets his answers out of him then shoots the light pole shoots the light out now all of a sudden you hear this growling see these like little red eyes or something called uh, coming towards so the guy got ate about something we don't know what's going on all i know is this is the creepiest alley ever everything is so dark and i don't know if it's a platform i was watching i was on my on the app so i don't know if that's different for disney plus but this was just like a really super uh creepy scene just really drawing you into you know like this kind of janky you know area that they were in trying to get these answers so that was interesting how they opened up with that. So basically we get the answers that he gets out of this guy is, um, is Tatooine is where there was a Mandalorian sighting. So we have the Mandalorian and baby Yoda off into off on their next, um, adventure to kind of figure out where, um, this Mandalorian is. So they get to, um, uh, Tatooine and it's really cool. Cause we get to see, uh, the this this lady that they've been meeting up with several times before and um, she always is she always is hanging around like the different um, the different droids and everything and trying to um, trying to figure out um, you know she has just like all different sorts of models of droids and everything um, Pelimoto that's the name I was looking for I was trying to blank there Pelimoto is the lady they meet up with but yeah she's she's uh, very quirky and funny and she's always like yelling at the droids like uh, today it's hard to find good help these days so that's just a really cool cute scene and she loves 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 her some baby Yoda so she's always looking for an opportunity to kind of pick up pick up baby Yoda and play with him and everything you can see her kind of trying to trade with the men you know, like if if the if this one has any kids, I want some of them or something like that. She was saying, but that's always like a funny scene to kind of see her interacting with the droids and also the opposed to that, opposite of that. We know the Mandalorian can't stand him some droids. Um, so except for um, IG Eleven, he did start to really become fond of uh, IG Eleven towards season one. So you know, there's that. So yeah, we get to see that cool little joy scene there with. Um, with a uh, Pelly there. And so then basically he ends up borrowing some of, uh, some of her gear, basically, um, uh, a speed bike there and ends up taking off going down to, um, um, going down further into Tatooine. He's going to a place called Moss, um, Pale Grove, And this is where he thinks there's a Mandalorian sighting. He ends up going down there, walking into, um, a bar like you do, you know, to figure out where they've seen the Mandalorian. And they end, he ends up finding out about a marshal. And basically, this marshal has taken um, or has or traded in um, to get Mandalorian armor. So basically, they came all the way down there. It's not really a Mandalorian. It's this guy dressed up trying to protect his town, trying to protect his people, dressed up as a Mandalorian. And you know that doesn't go because, uh, first of all, he sits down in the bar and takes off his helmet. You definitely don't do that in front of, like I said, other living creatures. Nobody's allowed to see what a Mandalorian looks like underneath his helmet. So that's the first thing um, ticked uh, Mandalorian, the Mandalorian off. And so he's like, okay, I need this armor back. And they're about to do a throwdown fight about it. And then all of a sudden, the ground starts to shake and everything in the town. And you're like, okay, what's, what's, what's going on here? Is it an earthquake? But actually... It is a um, a dragon. Um, uh, I believe they call it a crate dragon. And basically, it's this weird sort of dragon that can bury underneath the sand and everything and really shakes this town up. It's crazy, but everybody seems somewhat prepared. I mean, there's some livestock and everything that don't make it some animals and stuff that don't make it but everybody has these cool like you little unique houses and everything where they seem equipped to be able to uh handle that this creature's coming through their town apparently he does this on a, every occasion but this this creature is is crazy like something out of i don't even know what's going down 
Um, so yeah, they did a, maybe a little mix of Jurassic Park and whatever, and wherever it's going down in Star Wars right now. But yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So yeah, this, this creature comes to town. And so the marshal is like, hey, look, why don't we make a deal? I know because he knows Mandalorians can fight and they don't play. So he's like, if you help me out with this creature, because it's been terrorizing our town for years or whatever, for as long as he can remember, then I will just give you this armor. And so there goes the main um, the main theme of the episode, these two guys teaming up, really trying to gain a respect for each other. So they set off to go find out where this creature is and they end up running into, um, they think they're gonna run up on this dragon, but you hear these other kind of little weird kind of creature noises. And um, these, I don't know what you would even, I, like some kind of some kind of Jurassic, uh, I don't know. Maybe it was just a dinosaur. I was gonna say some kind of Jurassic lizard, but I don't know if that makes any sense. It's weird. It's like some kind of the front of it almost looked like a an alligator or something, and it was like, and then just a, a dinosaur that came out. And then you have um, the Tuscans are came out, and um, also known as the Sand People. So yeah, quite quite interesting scene because then all of a sudden. Um, the um the um the Mandalorian starts speaking um Tuscan and starts speaking to them and the marshals sit over there like oh, okay so you're just making all these noises but yes yeah, it's a very very weird scene and that the Mandal the Mandalorian just pulling out more of his tricks that we just know he just got a ton of survival tricks and tips. So we ended up see them the marshal, the Mandalorian, the Tuscan people um get on common ground, start trying to figure it out. Like, hey, we're trying to get rid of this dragon too. What can we do? What's our plan? They have the first original, the first original idea is to take a, um, a Bantha, these, these like big horn looking mammal things to, um, they're going to use one as a distraction and try to get the dragon to eat it. And then apparently I guess the more he eats or if he eats once, he gets really sleepy in his cave and knocks out. So they're trying to, they send a Tuscan out, with this um this bantha to try to get him to eat it and try to get him to go to sleep mm. but guess what he ends up eating the tuscan instead of the bantha the bantha just sitting over there walk just keeps you know walking around wobbling around whatever they do in the sand is like just just sitting there so yeah that plan didn't work so yeah plan two was all right hey how about i get some help now and so you get to see basically there's this rivalry between the Moss Pelgro people and the Tuscan people. So you get to see, um, which I think is 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 kind of cool when you get to see like two separate groups, especially the division we have going on in the world today, where you get to see these two different factions come together, but because basically they have this common enemy of this dragon, they got to get rid of it. One side can't do it without the other side because one side may have all the weapons. The Tuscans know about the habits of this creature of this dragon. They've been following it and studying it. So we have to see these guys come together, come up with this extreme plan. So what is the plan, you ask? The plan is they what they come up with is basically if um, if they can lure, they'll have the Tuscans go and plant some stuff to kind of lure, um, to lure this dragon out. And they want to get it right in the right spot to set off an explosion underneath. Because apparently if you blow up the stomach or whatever, I guess as with anything, the dragon, that's how you get to the dragon. Because you're not, obviously this thing is way too big. You're not shooting at it, coming at it from the head and all that kind of stuff. You're not shooting it that way. So you got to blow it up. So you end up detonating, setting all these charges. The, you'll see, you see the dragon come out a little bit. They kind of get it. They kind of get their hooks in it a little bit. Not so much a success. But they throw down more foul firepower. He comes out now, close enough for the charge. They detonate the charge. Okay, you're thinking, oh yeah, they did it. All right, cool, we're great. No, this thing wilds out. I'm trying to tell you. He goes back into the cave. Go, you think he's just gonna go back in there for a little bit, but he shoots up back up through the cave and starts spitting out some kind of like toxic um slime looking stuff like acid looking stuff that starts just tearing people like a peak to like pieces and so obviously the mandalorian steps up we got the marshal stepping up too because you know he has the mandalorian gear they use a little jetpacks to go up try to shoot him in the um in the face and everything like that obviously we're like okay what you doing because obviously y'all gotta have a plan because it's not gonna work this creature, like I was just these 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 fight scenes, the way they had to do these effects was just amazing and crazy. But basically, 
they had to jump back. The um the creature goes back down into the cave now and pops up behind everybody. Like you got all the Tuscans, um, all the people from this other little town, and the creature pops up behind them. You thinking, wow, like this gotta be like this dragon is smart, but he's not as smart as the Mando. Mandalorian, he's coming after him. He has this plan now. Now, you know, obviously, too, when the Mandalorian has a plan, it's always really dangerous where we're sitting at our seats like, why? Don't do it. Don't do it. But we know he's got to be the hero. We know he got to save the day. He made a he made a promise. He got to stick to his word. He always sticks to his word. So what he decides to do is he's holding on. You see him hold on to one of these banthas that is loaded up with explosions, like the mountain of weight that these things he carry is amazing. So there's this bantha with all this um uh, but our uh, bombs, explosive gear on, and everything. So he holds one of the banthas. The creature comes up, eats both of them, goes back down into the sand. And you thinking, okay, well, obviously we know the Mandalorian. I mean, he's he's coming back because he always got a plan. But you know, it's a little shaky there for a little bit because nobody, nothing's happening, nothing's shaking up in the sand. All of a sudden, he comes back up, <laughs> explosions everywhere. There you go, bye bye bantha. And what I thought was really cool. Oh, also too, I want to mention about the bantha here. I already mentioned that it was a horn man, but also for for you um, Star Wars uh, diehard fans, if you will remember, it was introduced. The bantha was introduced in 1977. So there's your little bantha fact right there. If you were curious, it was introduced in, um, in Star Wars in 1977. So yeah, they blow up the bantha. Everybody's celebrating, excited. What I thought was interesting is part of the deal for the Tuscans working with these um, Moss uh, Pilgrim Town people was that they wanted the carcass of the bantha at the end. So you kind of see them carving it up and everything. I mean, I guess I guess it's gonna taste good. I guess gonna eat it because you see the Mandalorian put a little bit on his speed bike too. Um, I don't know if it uh, looked like uh, Baby Yoda's trying to give him a little taste or something. So I mean, I I don't really know what Bantha um, or not Bantha. I don't really know what this um, crate dragon is gonna taste like. I guess it's good. All right, but yeah, you see them carving it up, and then. You know, we gotta have that uh, that crazy ending as the Mandalorian keeps on coming back every um, episode. So as we see the Mandalorian and the child ride off on their on the um, on the uh, speed bike off into the sunset, all of a sudden we see this very mysterious man look like he's watching them. He comes walking towards the camera and roll credits, and that's all we got. And so I can't wait. Like, I want you guys to let me know. Give me your comments on who you think this mystery guy is. If you all up into the Star Wars history and connecting all these dots and everything, let me know. Let the comments know, you know, as usual on all of Black Girl Nerd social media platforms. Check out our website. I'm going to continue to have these recaps posted on YouTube. So let me know, share your comments. Let me know what you're thinking about the season so far. Any questions you have, I will try to give you guys a shout out. You know, I love a good shout out for your comments. So yeah, just let me know. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this recap and enjoyed this dive into season two, chapter nine. I'm hoping to bring you chapter 10 next time. Maybe actually two chapters, got, kind of get us all caught up here. Make it make making my way through the watch list. But yeah, so Mandalorian's Fridays, uh, Disney Plus. And thank you guys for joining me. Stay safe out there and wear your mask. Bye. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.